So Debbie, thank you so much for joining us here at Penn State. Uh, we just have loved having you with us, sharing your experiences, and we appreciate you taking the time to come here and, and uh, share your expertise from the Berkeley uh, College of Music. It's been a pleasure, thank you. Thank you. So, um, and, and we learned a lot from you, but we, we like to take maximum advantage of our guests in their experience. And so this program we call Coil Perspectives. And it's an opportunity for us to present a sort of a thematic series of questions. And that allows us to get different lenses around the issue. Um, this topic that we're exploring this year in COIL is one that uh, we have a lot of issues with in our rural campus. I'm going to suspect we're not the only online program. And that's the idea of having students succeed and retain toward their academic goals. So it's around retention. And I'm wondering if you can maybe start. So I'm going to ask you three questions. Okay. The first one is going to be around uh, helping us to understand what does retention mean to you and in, in your context of your online learning program. And it's interesting. They do vary. People have different perspectives. The second one will be around the idea that if you had all of the resources available to you, time and money and people and such, what might you build as a system, a glance of a system that might help stay, students stay into their program? And the third question will be, we might not be able to do all of that great stuff. What's one thing we can start to do? What's one step? So let me start with that first one. What does, when we use the word retention or persistence, what does that mean to you in your context? I was so happy that this was going to be the, the subject because it's, um, it's something we're really looking at in a big way right now with the online school, with Berkeley Online. And if you asked me this question two years ago, I would have had a very different answer. Mm. But um, I think I mentioned we just introduced an online degree program this past year. So with that experience, I'm seeing retention through a different set of eyes. Mm -hmm. In the past, and I still think this is important, in the past I thought it was about the instructional design and the faculty participation and mm -hmm. really, and, and that is an important element, but um, you know, to, to quote Hillary Clinton's book, um, I think retention takes a village. Mm -hmm. I, I think from the first uh, look at the catalog, to the application process, mm -hmm. to um, you know matriculation, and then through to graduation. I think it's all, every, every step of the way is about retention. Mm -hmm. It's um, how quickly do we respond to you when you make an inquiry, and are you on hold for a long time when you're calling in, mm -hmm. and you know, how are we serving you? I, I think good retention is kind of like five-star service. Mm -hmm. you know? And as long as you have a ready, willing, able, and motivated student, um, that they need to bring that to the equation. I think we need to bring an impassioned team that cares about that student's success and at every touch point, it's um, optimal experience and responsive and yeah. I, I think that's a great perspective and, and it's got triggered to thought was the ableness of the learner. Yeah. Because I, I think part of this is on us. Well, a lot of it is on us, but part of this is are we getting the right learner to right. start with? Um, if we're using practices that are maybe not as um, st stringent or as um, in, in respect to that learner, are they the right? Are they a good match for our program? Yeah. And, it, yeah. and if they're not, they're going to struggle, and then their level of uh, their rates of, of retention or attrition are going to be higher. Yes. Yes. So I, I, I like that idea of sort of it takes the village. It's everybody who interacts with that yeah. student. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's pretend you have all of the resources <laughs> in the world and you can create this amazing experience. And I don't know if you have an example of an amazing experience like that. A, a colleague of mine just mentioned, uh, for sake of a, a vendor, but the Disney experience. Mm -hmm. They are very, very good from, from yeah. first touch all the way through your experience. Um, what does it mean for us in the educational context? How do we set that up? I think um, it's important that the team, in this case the Berkeley Online staff, all buys into, all subscribes to, all believes in that everything we do, every decision we make, every tool we adopt is all about what's best for the student experience, even if our uh, experience is a bit compromised. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of wonderfully uh, designed student-facing tools that are kind of ugly on the back end, but we can that's fine. We want to make sure that the student has the best experience. Um, and I think it's a matter of putting metrics on every one of those touch points for the students. So like I mentioned, um, hold time. You know, I've, I've heard horror stories for different uh, kinds of things, such as 
waiting for an answer on a specific part of the application process, whether it's with our department or another. And those things impact, you know, students can think this is what it's going to be like. I, I don't, I'm not going to persist, you know. Um, we, so I, I think really putting metrics and measuring and having a team that, that buys into this is, is very important. And then, you know, taking a, a good hard look at the learning environment. We're really trying to um, develop an environment with our new learning environment uh, management system that is all about the student social experience. So you're walking into a classroom, you're walking down. We, Berkeley has an area called the Berkeley Beach. It's just concrete in front of a, um, a, one of the main buildings. But it's where you know, gigs are formed and bands are formed and collaboration happens and did you hear this or that? And so we're trying to recreate that in the mm. learning environment, create a campus experience inside the learning management system. Um, and we're starting to put metrics around what does it mean if one instructor is very active in a discussion board um, and is responsive with assignments and you know, what does the retention of that class look like compared to somebody who maybe is less active and just really trying to figure out what are all the levers and touch points and things that matter and then uh, aspire to those. You know, and I, I, I love the way you're sort of dissecting those data points. Uh, who would have ever thought that hold time on a phone yeah. might affect a student electing to participate with you or not? Yeah. I mean, and today, you're, you're absolutely right. Or that social environment, how critical that social environment is to give the student a feeling of community and network. Yes. How does that relate to retention? Yeah. That's very good. Especially for our online students, you know, we are their, their lifeline. Um, if, if a student on campus has a less than optimal experience, let's say going to the financial aid office, they go back to their dorm, they're hanging out with their friends, they're playing and they're doing their thing. For us, it's that, that's it, that's their Berkeley connection. There's no uh, regrouping, really. Um, so we have to make sure it's all optimal. And so this is a beautiful segue to the last part. Yeah. So, so I have a picture in my mind of what you'd like to create as the Berkeley experience for your learner. Um, a high touch, no drop, you know, attention throughout. Yes. Um, and, may, and you're working on that, I guess. So what's, what's one thing, I mean, if you can pick out of that, what's one thing that you might do as a first step toward that kind of an environment? Well, uh, one thing that we have done um, is to ensure that our students in the learning environment are get, they're getting timely feedback from the instructor. So there's a there's an expectation and, and the facilitation agreements that our instructors sign are such that you know a student if they turn in their assignment on time again they're bringing their side to the table they can expect a 24 to 48 hour turnaround on grading and um, holding instructors to that really has made such a difference. And it's not hard to do. The people that work with us, the faculty that work with us, are they're doing it because they want to, not because they have to. And so they're really engaged. But sometimes life gets in the way. And so um, we, we intervene so that we're the ones saying, you need to get in there before a student picks up the phone and says, I'm paying for this. You know, oh, I'm trying to, and, and why am I not getting a grade? So being proactive in uh, finding where those issues might be before the student has even identified that, that it's a problem. So yeah, timely instructor feedback we're finding to be a really important point for persistence. Um, and the thing that we're trying to work towards is um, now that we're offering degrees, we have a flow chart, a swim lane chart of all the things that an accepted student has to do and flow through, whether it's with our office or the Office of Financial Aid or um, the credentialing office, you know, the IT. Mm -hmm. And putting uh, time stamps on those, it takes us, you know, five days to do a transcript analysis, and we can tell our students that, and they can expect that. So we want to put um, expected timelines and execute on those, and find where that's not happening, and, and fix it. Whether it's with a tool, whether it's with uh, some kind of, um, you know, staffing need. Mm -hmm. You know, it, one of the things you asked is if I had, could have anything at all, and I think this might be a bit controvers controversial, but I think it would be interesting to see if there could be monetary reward for retention. So what if an instructor has a class of 20 and, you know, 19 persist? Because you, Right. There, yeah. We know, yeah. You know there's a percentage. Of, yes. Yeah, yes. Or, all, you know, all of the, some kind of, you know, not that, I mean, people are not in, in it for the money, of course, education, but, sure. um, or gamify it or something. That there's, um, I think there, there are some things that can be done, and, and it might be an interesting thing to, to, to gamify it or put monetary rewards to, to reward. it. 
the, the trick of that, if I could just uh, think through that a little bit, is that you'd want to make sure in the end you're doing the student the Absolutely. service. Absolutely. Because there may be times yeah. when the student needs to step out. And yes. You have to be open and honest about that. Yes. And not worry about, oh, that's going to reduce my reward. These yeah. things get so complicated. It's so complicated. But, but I, I really like the idea. And, and I think what you're really suggesting is that um, the learners are, are being attended to. And, yes. And I like the idea of you being proactive. Um, about that attention with your desire to see them succeed. I, I, I think that I can tell that that's at the heart of not only you, but also your, your organization, your institution. So I know you will continue to do well. Thank you. And uh, once again, thank you so uh, much for being with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. I've learned a lot too, and it's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you.